ever since I was born. Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. Famous or infamous, one of the best known people on the planet ever. It was absolutely huge. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, has died. And I just wanted to say I love him so much. On the fateful day of June 25th, 2009, the demise of the legendary king of pop, Michael Jackson, left the world with utter horror and intrigue. According to the American Heart Association, the nation's heartbeat, Jackson died suddenly due to a cardiac arrest. The news sent shockwaves of terrific dismay among the loyal fanbase of the global superstar. However, many threads still question the reality behind this sudden doom. Are there any stones left unturned? The air is still thick with conspiracy theories regarding Jackson's death. One such theory suggests that the global phenomenon was suffering from financial turmoil. Perhaps Jackson wanted to disappear to free himself from the shackles of those debts? However, the Los Angeles coroner's office confirmed that it was Jackson's body through a post-mortem report. Another bizarre theory suggested that Jackson had slipped away from existence two years before the reported date of death. Conspirators argued that Jackson's figure at the O2 Arena was, in fact, an imposter, a puppet that was put there to replace the actual body. It sounds like an FBI case if there's truth to it, but this is not it. The actual daughter of the King of Pop, Paris Jackson, shocked the world by claiming her father had been murdered. Miss Jackson pointed her fingers at a shadowy group known as the Illuminati, hinting at the possibility of a plot orchestrated to murder Michael Jackson. These are just a few of the many conspiracy theories and possibilities surrounding Jackson's death. People still continue to talk about these tales and grieve upon the passing of the legend, as the official death reason is as fishy as it can be. This episode is all about debunking these conspiracy theories and the real reason behind Jackson's death. What happened? Stick with us to find out. In the bustling city of Gary, Indiana, Michael Joseph Jackson was born on August 29, 1958. He quickly rose to fame as an American singer, songwriter, and dancer, dominating the entertainment scene of the early mid-1980s. With his mesmerizing performances and chart-topping hits, he became the most beloved entertainer globally. Michael Jackson, the eighth child among ten siblings, was born to Joseph, Joe, and Catherine Jackson. Joe worked in a steel mill and performed in a local R&B group, while Catherine showcased her musical abilities by singing and playing clarinet and piano. Their musical talents profoundly impacted their children from an early age. In 1994, Michael Jackson married Lisa Marie Presley, though their marriage ended in divorce in 1996. Later, he married Debbie Rowe, and they welcomed two children, Michael Joseph Jackson II, also known as Prince Jackson, and Paris Jackson. Unfortunately, their marriage ended in 1999, and in 2002, Michael became the father of a third child known as Blanket Jackson. So, the interesting thing is, is that he started performing when he was just five years old with four of his elder brothers, Marlon, Jermaine, Tito, and Jackie. Throughout his career, he earned 13 Grammy Awards and 23 American Music Awards, boasting an estimated 750 million album sales. Notably, his album Thriller stands as the best-selling album globally, with over 50 million copies sold. Undoubtedly, it's a monumental achievement, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. But can you believe this? In the late 1970s, Michael Jackson embarked on his solo career with Off the Wall, selling over 20 million copies. And then with his follow-up album Thriller, he became the world's most famous pop singer, mesmerizing audiences with hits like Beat It and Billie Jean, while setting numerous sales records. Michael Jackson was popular, but fate had something else in store for him. So, on the night of Wednesday, June 24th, 2009, Michael Jackson was practicing. He was getting ready for his big comeback concerts at London's O2 Arena. He had been away from the public eye for some time, and everyone was eager to see him perform again. Late at night, Jackson's personal doctor, Conrad Murray, looked after him in the bedroom of his Los Angeles home in the Holmby Hills neighborhood. This happened shortly after Jackson came back from a concert after 1 a.m. No one knew the full extent of what was happening behind the closed doors of Jackson's home in the Holmby Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles that night. 
In the midst of Michael Jackson's epic tale, a pivotal moment is about to happen. Subscribe now to unravel the mystery surrounding his passing and explore the enduring legacy of the King of Pop. On the fateful morning of June 25th, things took a dark turn at Jackson's home. Dr. Conrad Murray, Jackson's trusted doctor, found him unresponsive after giving him sleep medication. Panic spread as Murray realized Jackson wasn't breathing and that his heartbeat was weak. At 10.42 a.m., Dr. Murray initiated CPR for 10 minutes while security called for urgent help. With each passing second, a tense battle to revive Jackson. Paramedics arrived swiftly, tirelessly working for 42 minutes to save Jackson's life, underscoring the severity of the situation at his home. But Dr. Murray's failure to call 911 reveals a haunting truth that might have saved Michael Jackson's life. Now isn't this mysterious for all of us? Because at 1.14 p.m., they quickly took him to the hospital. Doctors tried to bring him back to life for over an hour, but sadly, Jackson was declared dead at 2.26 p.m. at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. After his passing, shocking details emerged about the singer's death. Biographers uncovered serious issues like insomnia, lupus, vitiligo, and extreme thinness in his final months, prompting concern from his family. According to reports, Jackson battled with abusing prescription painkillers, a diagnosis that was confirmed by his dermatologist. Yet another doctor saw him days before his death, and found him seemingly fine. Members of his stage crew who saw him the day before he passed during rehearsal described him as healthy and full of energy. Rehearsals extended well past midnight, and afterward, Jackson spent time with fans outside of his home. It wasn't until late that night they mentioned having difficulty sleeping. So let's find out what exactly happened on June 25th. Early in the morning on June 25th, the singer called Dr. Murray for help with sleeping. Dr. Murray gave him some drugs, but they didn't work. The singer asked for propofol, a medicine he used before to help him sleep. By 10.40 a.m., he still couldn't sleep. So Dr. Murray gave him propofol mixed with lidocaine. Little did they know, this desperate guest for sleep would mark the beginning of a tragic sequence of events that would forever alter the course of history. In 2009, when investigators looked into Jackson's autopsy, they were shocked. They discovered he had taken powerful anti-anxiety drugs like midazolam and lorazepam as well as propofol. These drugs, along with diazepam and Ativan, could be lethal. What stunned them even more was that Dr. Murray injected Jackson with several drugs to help him sleep through the night. Also, the doctor said Jackson was very healthy. His heart was strong. The only problem was a little lung inflammation. He was at a good weight, and his lungs and blood vessels were clear except for a small blockage in one leg. On August 28th, a significant ruling came from the Los Angeles County Department of Medical Examiner Coroner, who made a significant announcement. Jackson's death was officially ruled a homicide. The cause, a deadly mix of drugs, notably propofol and lorazepam, played a pivotal role. Additionally, diazepam, bedazolam, epinephrine, and lidocaine were also implicated in his demise. Full toxicology report remained confidential despite the findings, leaving many questions unanswered. In a shocking turn of events, Dr. Murray faced trial on September 27, 2011. Astonishingly, just 24 days later, he was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. His sentencing swiftly followed five days after the verdict, and he was immediately detained without bail. The jury found several concerning factors before delivering their verdict. Dr. Murray testified that he performed CPR on Jackson after finding him. However, medical professionals questioned his technique as he attempted resuscitation on a mattress instead of a hard surface. Shockingly, he only used one hand during CPR, while the standard requires two, and this raised serious doubts, especially considering his medical background. Also, Murray didn't call 911. He claimed there was no landline and didn't know the address. However, he made private calls from his cell phone, which he didn't mention. After just 10 minutes, he stopped trying to save Jackson. But it wasn't until 12.21 p.m. that a security guard called 911 when paramedics arrived. Jackson had no pulse. Dr. Murray claimed that the musician had a pulse when taken by emergency services, but shockingly the paramedics disagreed, declaring the singer was in full cardiac arrest and showed no signs of improvement during transport. And in a shocking twist, Dr. Murray was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in November 2011. Despite his serious crime, he was praised by the sheriff's office for being a good inmate and kept apart from other inmates. Although he was supposed to spend four years in prison, guess what? He got out less than two years because he behaved well and the prison was too crowded. 
making the situation even more shocking. Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson, had sued Dr. Murray for causing Michael's death a year earlier, but he decided to drop the case in 2012. Murray's medical license in Texas was revoked, while those in California and Nevada were suspended, marking a shocking downfall. Isn't this shocking to you all? Now let's talk about his funeral. Before Jackson's burial, his family aired a TV service that stunned the world as over two and a half billion viewers tuned in globally, marking it as one of the most watched events in history held at Forest Lawn Memorial Park. Only 17,500 tickets were available out of a staggering 1.2 million hopefuls who entered through an online lottery. Could you believe this? Jackson was buried in a $25,000 solid bronze casket, and the funeral cost one million, with more than half spent on his resting place. He was laid to rest in the Holy Terrace section of the Great Mausoleum at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. His resting place is closely guarded and only accessible in rare cases. Jackson remains as one of the most awarded singers in history. Despite his early passing, his impact on modern pop rock is immeasurable and unmatched. And that wraps up the tale of Michael Jackson's passing, a legend whose music echoes through time. Want more captivating stories? Like, share, and subscribe. Tell me, what's the next story you want me to dive into? Drop your suggestions down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.